welcome to today's edition of 4-H Live Online Learning. My name is Chelsea Corkins and I'm a 4-H specialist in Saline County, also covering Carroll and Sheraton counties in our Northwest region of Missouri. And I am here today to talk us through taste. Uh, we're going to wrap up our nutrition week uh, today by talking a little bit about something that we all do, which is eating, right? Uh, so then we've all probably experienced taste. Um, so what do we know about our tongue and about our sense of taste? We know we have a few different senses and the taste is one of them. We know that our tongue plays an important role in taste, but what do we really know about taste? We'll start with this. Uh, thinking only about taste, not thinking about physical appearance, not thinking about um, smell or anything. Imagine a lemon and imagine a piece of chocolate. How are these two items different? Okay, so think about how a lemon tastes, think how a piece of chocolate tastes, how might they be different? You might use some words such as bitter or sour, probably sour for that lemon. You might use some words such as sweet for the chocolate. Um, you might even describe some different textures of the two depending on what you've got. Um, but those are all tastes. That's how your body senses uh, these, these different things between things like bitter and um, sweet and sugar. Um, so we're gonna talk about those today. But we wanna start off a little bit with some safety first. Um, whenever we're ingesting something, we want to be sure of a couple things. First, taste only what you're directed to taste. Don't be trying other things around your house. Don't be experimenting too far with some of these things. Always ask an adult's permission before you're, you're gonna taste anything or eat anything. Also, always be aware of food allergies. Many of us are allergic to a variety of foods. Um, so make sure that you or anyone that you're experimenting with is not allergic to any of the foods we might be trying today. If they are, let's find some alternatives. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Talk a little bit about taste and how that applies to nutrition and the foods that we eat. Okay, so we are gonna start off with a little bit of a true and false game, okay? So well, some of us haven't been in school for a while, so we might miss some of our true and falses. So we're gonna start off with a question and I'm going to hold up both my true sign and my false sign. I'm gonna read you the question and then I'm gonna let you kind of think, maybe give me some answers and then I'll, I'll tell you which one it is, okay? All right, so our first statement is, that the tongue is a muscular structure attached to the floor of the mouth. Okay, so the tongue is a muscular structure attached to the floor of the mouth. Is that true or is that false? Well, it started you off pretty easily. Hopefully we got this one right. The tongue is our muscle right there that is attached to the floor of the mouth. So that is true. Awesome, good job. Okay, so question number two. Those tiny bumps that you see on your tongue are your taste buds. Now, is that true or is that false? Is it true or is it false that the tiny bumps that you see on your tongue are your taste buds? Take a second to think about it. Maybe write an answer in that chat. All right, the answer is false. What you see are not your taste buds. Those are called papillae. Those are the little bumps that you've got your taste buds sit on top of those and aren't actually visible. Those are your receptors. Your taste buds are the receptors, but you can't see those to naked eye. So the tiny bumps that you see on your tongue or taste buds, nope, that is false. All right, so our next question. The human tongue is divided into two parts, the anterior and the posterior. Okay, so we've got to first think what are those two words? What do anterior and posterior even mean? So some of our older kids might know what those mean. Some of us might not. Is the human tongue divided into two parts, the anterior and the posterior? Is that true or is that false? That is true. So we've got the anterior, which means nearer or front, and then we've got the posterior, which is the further back. So in our tongue's case, about the front two thirds of our tongue, most of what you can see by just looking at uh, kind of the inside of your mouth is that anterior. Your posterior is the back third of the back of your tongue. Okay, all right, number four. All right, so let me ask you this statement. The average length of a human tongue is six inches long. Is that true or is that false? 
What do we think? The average length of the human tongue is six inches long. True or false? False. Our average length of the human tongue is only about four inches long. Now remember, an important word in that statement is average. So that means we will have some tongue, tongues that are slightly longer, some that are going to be slightly short. You can check this one out if you want to try it at home. See how much, uh, how long your tongue measures out to be. All right, our final true and false. Your tongue tastes only certain tastes, whether that's sweet, salty, uh, sour, or bitter, in certain regions. So some of you may be seen something called a taste map. Does your tongue taste only certain tastes in certain regions of your tongue? Now, is that statement true or is that false? Is that taste map true or is it false and misleading? Well, this is a good one for us to end on because the actual answer is false. That taste map that you might have learned in school, that's not 100% accurate. It's a little misleading. Your tongue indeed does not have certain regions that it tastes certain, uh, certain flavors. Um, your taste receptors are all over your tongue. Some are slightly more sensitive in different areas, but you can taste any of the tastes all over your mouth. So that picture makes it look like I can only taste sweet things if they're in a certain area, maybe the very front tip of my tongue. But in fact, I can taste sweet anywhere over my tongue, but it might be more sensitive in that front region. So keep that in mind as we move through a couple activities here, okay? So now you can be the smart one at your next uh, game night telling people that that, that uh, tongue map is not 100% accurate. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to one of our three activities that we're going to do today. Okay, so our first one is actually talking directly about that taste map. Okay, so remember, you don't have certain tastes in certain regions of your tongue, but you do have slightly more sensitive, uh, sensitive tastes in different areas. So what we're going to do for this one is we are going to have four containers of different flavors. So this first one is bitter. Um, so I've actually used um, tonic water. Uh, for some of us that are sensitive to tonic water, this is going to be very bitter. Um, some people might also want to take an onion, cut up a bit of an onion with adult supervision and put that in water and let it soak for a little bit. That's going to give us our bitter flavor. Then we've got our sour and that's my lemon juice. I put a little bit of water in there because it's pretty darn sour. And we've got our salty. So I took a little bit of salt, put it in my container, mixed it up with some water. And last, we've got sweet. So this is gonna be some of your sugar, put it in water, mix it up together. Okay, so I've used a popsicle stick in each one of mine. You could use a toothpick, um, whatever you think uh, might help you best for this. Either one is a good option. So first you're gonna draw yourself one of those taste maps. Now remember, we said that these regions don't mean they're the only areas you can taste those types of flavors. They just tend to be the ones that are a little more sensitive. Okay, so we're going to work through this today and decide which ones might correlate with our different, um, our different flavors that we've got. Okay, so I'm going to let you all work on this one um, after the video, just so you can do your own little experiment. I'm going to show you how to do it. So in your taste map, let's say we're going to start with number four here. I want to see if I can determine which one of these four uh, flavors do I taste most sensitively on the tip of my tongue, okay? Now you can either do one area at a time or you could take bitters, for example, and put that in the five different regions of your, the four different regions of your tongue and see which one's the most sensitive. That might actually work better because then you're just focused on one, scent, one, uh, one flavor and seeing which one, which one is uh, the most sensitive in a certain region. So I'm gonna take my sweet. Of course, I'm gonna take the sweet. That one's maybe the best tasting when we dilute it by itself. So I've got my sweet in here. Uh, I've got quite a bit of sugar in it, so I mix it up first to make sure it's all saturated. Uh, we want to make it almost to a so oversaturated point. I'm going to take my uh, toothpick or my, my um, popsicle stick, and I'm going to put it in whatever region I'm looking at right now. So I'm looking at the front part of my tongue. So, okay. Gave that a try. 
You might want to use a little bit of water and rinse out your mouth a little bit in between each one so that you know that you're only sensing that part of your tongue. So I'm going to try the side this time, front side. Okay. Maybe rinse out with a little water. And the third side. Mm, that didn't taste quite, quite as sweet. Okay. Now, a hint about the back side or, or your posterior part of your tongue. It's number one region that I've got on this map here. Be careful. Um, some of us have a sensitive um, gag reflex, and so you don't want to cause yourself to, to choke or anything as you're doing this. So be careful. Um, test it out a little bit. Don't go too crazy. Um, but try to sweeten that area. Okay, so that definitely wasn't quite as strong as some of my other ones. All right, so that means I would probably put the sweet at either the number four position or the number three. And remember, these are sensitivities. So I was able to taste sweet in all four of those regions. It just might've tasted a little sweeter in one of these two here. So then you can move through your salty, through your sour, and through your bitter, and decide if they correlate with any one of these. And then go ahead and uh, Google those answers on, on the internet. Um, I'll also put it down in the comments once we're done with this video uh, so that you can see that map and you can see if your personal sensitivities correlate with what some of what science says. Okay, so our next, I'm gonna put away those containers. Make sure I don't spill those over my laptop or anything else. Okay, so our next activity is gonna be talking about saliva and its role in our tasting. So in order for food to have a taste, chemicals from the food must first be dissolved by saliva. Okay, so once they're dissolved, then the chemicals can be detected by taste buds. So if we don't have saliva, we might not have any taste, right? But we're gonna do a bit of a test to see if that's true. So you're gonna grab a couple um, dried uh, foods, crackers are good. I, I grabbed some, some crackers that have some salt on them. Also grab some crackers that have like a garlicky flavor. Um, and I've got a little bit of sugar here as well that I'm just gonna dab on my tongue and see if I can taste that. Okay, so the most important part though, you want a paper towel or something to wipe off your tongue in between to see if you can taste the difference or see the difference. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna explain this to you first, is you're gonna take the paper towel, wipe off your tongue a little bit, get it nice and dry, and then take maybe one of your crackers, put it on your tongue. Don't close your mouth, but see if you can taste that, that flavor, that salt, that sweet, that garlic, whatever it might be that your flavor might have on it. See if you can taste it. Okay, then close your mouth, kind of swish around your saliva a little bit, get your tongue wet again, and see if you can taste it then. All right, so we're gonna give it a quick try. I'm gonna try the things that I tell you all to try. Um, remember, only ingest things that either we're suggesting on this video or get parents' uh, advice and permission first uh, before you're eating anything, before you're tasting anything at home. So we're gonna take our paper towel, Mmm, that worked. When I put the cracker on my tongue, I didn't taste anything but the texture. Could tell it had something on it, whether it was salty or sugary, um, but I couldn't tell what that taste was until I closed my mouth and my saliva kind of went around my mouth a little bit. So give it a try on some different tastes. See if the garlic and maybe the sugar does the same thing. An alternative to our saliva test is the smell test and the smell, your uh, smells role in foods as well, okay? So this is one that maybe you can try. I didn't have all of the supplies, but I wanna tell you about it, okay? So get yourself either some different flavored jelly beans or maybe um, you have baby in the family and you have some different flavored baby foods. Um, cover those up, blindfold yourself or work with a partner and plug your nose, okay? So I would I'd blind my eyes so that I can't see um, uh, what, what color things are, um, which we'll talk about here shortly. And then I'm going to plug my nose. So I'm gonna hold my nose closed so that I can't smell things as I'm eating them, okay? So try tasting maybe one of your cherry jelly beans. So taste, take a cherry jelly bean and go ahead and plug your nose, eat it, Try and tell us what flavor that is. You might not be able to tell. 
maybe you'll get a little bit of a hint of it being a cherry or so. So go ahead then after you finish, you, you consume and swallow that jelly bean, unplug your nose and try and eat another cherry jelly bean. Does that taste cherry? I bet it will, particularly when you compare it to that first one that you tried. With baby food, same thing. Maybe you can take um, some applesauce even and try some applesauce and see if you can tell whether it tastes like applesauce maybe with cinnamon or without cinnamon. Uh, maybe it's some different flavorings that you've got in that applesauce, so that, that baby food, and give that a try. Remember, try it both with your nose open and while plugging your nose. We usually have your, your, your eyes covered, so you can't tell the difference between them. And see if smell affects how, you can, how well you can taste um, different things. Okay, so let's go to our final experiment and activity of the day. Remember, we're being food scientists today, so it's okay if you, you kind of alter these a little bit. Maybe you have some follow-up questions. Um, you want to try some different textures, see how texture um, affects maybe your taste. Um, you want to try some whole foods on our last one, um, some different foods. Instead of saliva, you want to try, uh, or instead of... Um, your crackers with your saliva. You want to try different drinks. See what happens there. Give it a try. See what's affected by, you know, what affects your, your taste as much. Okay, so this one's one of my favorites. Um, you'll probably want a family member. Again, make sure you have their approval. No sneaking around here. Um, and tell them that you've got three or four different sodas you want them to try, okay? So I've got a red soda that just happens to be flavored in a strawberry flavor. Got a purple soda. This one's more of a grape flavor. And then I've got some regular unflavored soda. Um, so you might have this at home or you might have to ask an adult if they could get this next time you go to the store. But this is clear and unflavored. So this doesn't have any flavor to it. What I'm gonna do though, is take one drop of red and one drop of yellow food coloring and mix them into this non-colored drink. Now let's go back to our primary colors. If I do one drop of red and one drop of yellow, what color are we gonna get? One drop of red and one drop of yellow. I might have to put two drops of yellow depending on what shade we get out here. And we're still pretty red, so I'm gonna put another drop of yellow, see if we can get, and it might be a little, too concentrated, but that's okay. Okay, so it's hard to see on the video, but we've got a tint of orange there. There we go, that's, that's not too bad if I can catch the light with it. We've got orange here, okay. Um, also make sure that you're doing this pretty quick after you pour it. I let mine sit pretty long, and so I just stirred out all the bubbles of it. So now it doesn't even look like it's soda anymore. So be ready to do this experiment pretty quickly. Um, so you wanna mix the color together, and then you want to ask your family member, okay, what flavor is soda number one? What flavor is soda number two? And what flavor is soda number three? You might be interested to find out that they may tell you that this tastes orange. This tastes like the fruit orange. But you know, it's just not, it, it's a soda that doesn't have flavor to it mixed with orange dye. So it doesn't have any flavor. But our eyes deceive us. We associate the color red sometimes with cherry or strawberry, uh, the color purple with grape or sometimes a blueberry, the color orange with the flavor orange, even if that flavor doesn't always exist there. So go ahead and try that out. Maybe they'll be suspicious of that one. Maybe you put it in your, your middle choice. Maybe you put it the first, you know, switch it up, try some different orders. See if people can tell you that that orange flavoring actually doesn't exist, that it's just a color. All right, so what did we learn today? Well, we learned about how all the different um, senses kind of interact with each other in order for us to taste. Some examples are our sight, our smell. We know how our saliva affects our ability to taste. We also learned about that taste map, um, about your tongue, about how it's a little misleading. It's not that those regions are exactly where you taste those flavors, it's that they're slightly more sensitive in those areas. So keep that in mind. We also learned some fun facts about the tongue, which is the muscular structure attached to the floor of your mouth. Um, we learned that the average human tongue is about four inches long. We also learned that those tiny bumps that you can see are actually not your taste buds. Your taste buds are the tiny little receptors on top of those bumps that you actually can't see with the naked eye. 
So next time you go to make a tasty snack, maybe you're gonna eat one of those smoothies or those red, white, and blue um, yogurt burritos that we put together, or maybe it's some of the produce that you uh, raised in your own garden, think about what you're tasting and think about how your tongue is really um, interpreting that and what that, you know, what all that means. So go out and try these experiments with some adult supervision um, and be your own food scientist and see what you can learn through this process. Awesome. Well, thank you all for enjoying uh, today's video and joining us for 4-H Live online learning. Don't forget to tune in next week where we'll be talking about at-home crafts. The week after that, we'll be talking about 21st century skills. So join us right back here at 3.30 Monday through Friday. We'll have more for you to learn. Thanks, everyone.